every so often I get a question related to something that we've seen happen countless times during the Mass, but maybe don't understand why or what it is that is implied or symbolized in that action. And the one that I was asked was about when the priest breaks the bread while we're singing the Lamb of God and places a small piece of it in the chalice. So those two actions actually are referred to as the fracture of the host and then the mingling of the body with the blood, of the bread with the wine that has become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So what is it that's behind that ritual? Why do we do those specific things? Well, it, as many of the things that we do go back to the ancient practices of the church, in almost every part of Christianity in the early days, there was always a fracture. There was always a breaking of the bread. And this is because in Scripture, this is what we hear. We hear that Jesus broke bread with his disciples. Not just a phrase that we use, meaning that we ate a meal with someone, but literally there was a breaking of the loaf of bread. That was a part of the meal ritual in Jesus' day. And so the early Christians always broke the bread during the Eucharistic celebration. When Jesus meets the disciples on the way to Emmaus, which many see as a foreshadowing of the first Mass, it said that Jesus was revealed to them in the breaking of the bread. That's what they tell the apostles when they go back to Jerusalem, that Jesus made himself known in the breaking of the bread. So there is a literal breaking of the bread that takes place during our Mass. And there are a couple of symbolic components to that. The first is that each and every one of us who receives the Eucharist is sharing in the same meal. There are other ways that this is symbolized, but in the breaking of the bread, it's very clear. I am eating from the same loaf. I am eating from the same source. And whether or not those hosts are sitting in a separate container, in a separate ciborium, whether they were consecrated at a previous Mass and are coming forth from the tabernacle, that symbol of breaking of the bread is connected to that we are sharing the same thing. It is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So we are participating in this one meal. When we move to the mingling, then a piece of that bread is placed in the chalice with the blood. And that is to show that the body and blood are not separate and distinct items. When we receive the host, we are not receiving only the body of Christ. When we drink from the cup, we are not receiving only the blood of Christ. I think normally when we talk about it, it's often we say, okay, the body is the host and the blood is the cup. But that's not true because Jesus' body and blood are united. They are the same thing. So in that symbolic action of placing a part of the host in the blood, the mingling of the two together, it's a recognition that when we receive the host, or when we receive the cup, we receive both the body and the blood of Jesus. This is why, during the pandemic and in other circumstances, the faithful receive both the body and the blood, even if they're only receiving under one form, either the host or from the cup. The priest has to receive from both to represent that all of us are sharing both the body and the blood, and the mingling is another action. It is another symbol of that unity between the body and the blood. They're not two separate things. And when the priest then prays, there's a prayer that he says when he places that host in the chalice. And that takes us deeper, I think, into the deeper symbol and the reality that is contained. So this prayer is, May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. 
May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. What was the action, the primary action, that brought us eternal life? Ultimately, it's Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection. But the moment of sacrifice is when Jesus is hanging on the cross. And what happens? His hands are pierced, his side is pierced, and his blood flows and mingles with his body. So his body is broken, fractured, and then the body and the blood mingle with one another as he hangs on the cross. So this moment, it's one of the most solemn moments of the liturgy. We are praying, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. We are recalling our sinfulness and thinking about what saves us from that sin. It is Christ's sacrifice on the cross. And this Eucharist that we celebrate is a symbol of that and more than a symbol. It is a sharing in that sacrifice. For us as Catholics, the Mass is a sacrifice. It is a proper sacrifice foreshadowed by the ancient sacrifices of the Israelites in the temple area when they slaughtered the firstborn animals without blemish. Jesus has become for us that firstborn without blemish. And so when we break the body of Jesus, we are recalling how he was broken for us on the cross. And there are some days when I break that host and it almost feels like I'm tearing it like flesh would be torn. And that carries a great deal of weight for me because it feels like I am breaking Jesus' body. And every time I sin, that's what I'm doing. I am breaking his body. I am harming him in a real way. So when I break that bread, that host, I'm reminded of the crucifixion, of what Christ did for me to save me so that he could have mercy on me as the Lamb of God, as the sacrificial Lamb. And then that mingling, the sharing in the body and the blood being united together is a reminder for us that Jesus, as both God and man, mingled together. As man, he died for us. But as God, he was raised up for eternal life and desires us as men to share in his divinity, in his godliness, in rising again with him on the last day. There is a lot going on in that moment that we often gloss over. May we, when we celebrate Mass this coming weekend, when we attend, when we reach that moment, may we perhaps have a deeper understanding and appreciation of what that action truly means and how it reminds us of all that Christ did so that we could be saved. God bless, and we'll see you next time.